Oh, new my... year, new you. No. Woo! Woo! No. Yeah. I love Ooh, how it's what's... I love you, not yeah. the rock. Rock and roll! <laughs> Double horns, you know? <laughs> I love you! <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't know the difference. There's my confession. <laughs> so? Hey everyone, it's our weekend in review. Hello. We had a great weekend. Yeah, it was Again. good. It was good. Like we were talking during staff meeting that it just seems like the theme that we've had for this year, Courage for the Breakthrough, is is really like coming to fruit. Like we've been seeing little breakthroughs here and there in people's lives, in uh, people committing and stepping in. Even down to children at uh, uh, release time, even coming here on Sunday to um, the youth at youth group, we're seeing huge breakthroughs in their faith during worship, hands up, eyes closed. It is awesome seeing people now step out of their, break out of their little shells and engage more. Man, it's been a good year. I love the theme for the year of um, Courage for the Breakthrough. That was actually my, my starting talking point was how proud I am of our church. Like I love seeing just the um, overall engagement on so many different levels Yes, growing. So yes. thank you all and I'm very proud of Everybody that's taken up the challenge and and put that foot forward, yes, you're doing awesome. So keep rocking. We we yeah, it, it it's so awesome. I and sharing this week on habits, serving, and to go through our list, our attendance roster. We just we try to keep track of everyone so we can pray and see how you're doing that kind of a thing. But to go back through, even through this hard season we've been through the last couple of years, and to see 54 people actively serving in some way in our church uh, that's that's over half of our current attendance average right. attendance of people that are willing to step in and serve the lord yeah and i know i have this Woo! um down down the line here as far as a note but um like to those that are volunteering that serve like you serve a huge purpose um for instance yesterday i was able to take a day off and spend it with my family and get my whole family here to church and just enjoy um, the message and worship as a family unit. And I was only able to do that because we have volunteers that come here and do what they do. And so I'm super grateful for that. And uh, yeah, it's just a testament to what volunteering and serving others can do. It was a huge impact in my life and I'm very grateful for it. So. Yeah, amen. We believe in family, we believe in family ministry. And so uh, from time to time, you'll see Mike and I like here and engaged, but we won't be up front. And we just think that's healthy and, and believe that, that we, we want to see whole families raised up and saved. And that includes ours. That includes <laughs> our family, right? Yeah. So yeah, we want to take that stuff. time. It's really great to just sit with the family and worship or hear the message. And we need that too from time to time. So yeah. we appreciate your grace. But again, we couldn't do that if it wasn't for all of you stepping up and saying, you know what? I have a gift. I have a purpose. I'm going to use it. So, well done, church. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so one of the things we talked about, or that you talked about on Sunday, was identity. And there was uh, something that you said was, our enemy tries to connect our failures to our identity. And I don't know how many times, if you're anything like me, how many times in my life have I, um, you know, something as simple as I lost a baseball game, so I'm a loser. Well, that doesn't necessarily, that's not really true. So what about all the... MLB players, when they lose a game, are they losers and horrible baseball players? No, they win other games, right? So not letting our performance um, be our identity. Our performance is not our identity. Um, and the sooner that you can realize that, the sooner you're gonna have a little more freedom to enjoy the good things that God has for you. Amen. And, and when you can finally give yourself grace to, you know, we all wanna do well, we all want to uh, excel, and the sooner that we can allow ourselves some grace um, to fail, you know, hopefully we're not failing in some way that's gonna really set us back in the wrong ways. Of course, there's grace for that too, right? But but in even just stepping out with our gifts or stepping out in sharing our faith or something, and maybe it doesn't go the way that we want it to, uh, to give yourself some grace when it doesn't, and be like, hey, you tried. That's, right? that's huge, yeah. you tried. Uh, I, I lived a lot of my life based on my failures. I was a failure because I failed at so many things. And uh, you guys are going to hear this story uh, hopefully sooner rather than later, but I had an experience with a drill sergeant in boot camp and he um, really opened my eyes and he's like, why didn't you stop letting the world tell you who you are and who you aren't? The world means nothing. What does God tell you that you are? What is God saying about you? And it was a uh, really 
good pivot spot in my life. I mean, from there I graduated boot camp. I went to school at 4.0 GPA in college. I remember having only Fs growing up, you know? So it was wow. a huge moment That's and it huge. was, my, my thinking had to shift. I had to believe in myself and stop thinking that my failures or my shortcomings are all that I amount to. Because I amount to so much more than that. And God has so much more for me. So why am I dwelling on that? So I take a lot of, not all the time. <laughs> Sometimes I still struggle with this pretty good. But I try to look at my failures as opportunities to get better at whatever it is that I failed at. Because now I know how to do it wrong. How can I do it right? And not to do it wrong. Yeah. And I think, I think the flip side is true too. If we base our identity on our performance, let's say we're doing well, um, you know, we can get proud because of that. And so the flip side of that is, is that we just need to see us as God sees us loved, accepted, uh, individuals that he died for, sons and daughters of the king. We should be looking at each other in that same way. Yeah. You talked about, um, I'm just going to read a little paragraph. We'll get a little wordy here. It says, but then three things um, of my who catch me. One, I desire to be a godly man who leaves a Christ-like legacy. Um, two, I'm a leader in the house of God, quite imperfect, but I want to lead well and serve the house and community as a good example of what it means to follow Jesus. And most importantly, three, I'm a child of God who's been purchased by the blood of the Lamb. I am God's son, and as such, I live for him, to love him, to serve him, to please him, and because he loved me first. I love that. I, I think one of my struggles as a young Christian, um, you know, as a teenager, was I would look at these people that are on stage, they're leading worship, the, the ushers, the, the pastor, and I would be so intimidated. These guys are so perfect. They're so amazing. I could never be a Christian. God will never love me because I can never be as good as them. And again, that comes back to believing that I'm a failure because of my failures. And being on this side of it, it's, man, I am not perfect. And, you know, I feel like Christians, I haven't heard this just recently, you know, Christians are hypocrites. We're not. We're imperfect, broken people. We are here for the same reason as you. We're, we're here to encounter the living God who is the perfect one. And we strive to be like that. But we also live in a broken world. We still battle with our flesh. And so we are going to fail at different times. Uh, again, hopefully not in some terrible way. But... Um, we're gonna we're gonna take two steps forward, one step back, and that's where we rely upon who we are in Christ and His blood to cover our sin, so that we can get back up and try again. Yeah. So I I thought you know just getting back to the idea of everyone being part of the body of Christ, like uh, going back to my daughter's fifth grade stuff <laughs> that we were learning. I'm like, man, the lungs and all the process it takes just to breathe. What an amazing thing. And, and man, we definitely have an intelligent creator. Right. And he compares the church to a body. Yeah, and, and the way that you broke that down was perfect. Like, I didn't know I was going to be taking like a biology or anatomy class by any means. But um, everybody has their, their part. And no part is more important than the other because when one is not there, the rest of them lack or fall or can't. But I thought that was, okay. that was a good um, connection there. And I refuse to believe that I was some single cell molecule that crawled out of the muck. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just... hard. it's hard to believe that when you look at the intricacy of just the human body. It's, it's amazing. I think it's harder to believe in the theory of evolution than it is to an intelligent creator. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Yep. So uh, one verse that I didn't get to on Sunday that I thought really um, hits this idea well about the church being a body and not all about just one person or the staff or a few leaders. It's about the body being the body. In Ephesians 4.11, it says, Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard for Christ. So really what this is saying is that if, if the pastors and teachers and other leaders do all of the work of the ministry, they're actually failing at their job. Because <laughs> it, it actually teaches their job is to equip the body to do ministry. That's really interesting. I don't think I've ever uh, picked that up that deep into that. Yeah, place. yeah. Good. 
And, and so obviously we want to lead the way. We want to excel in the areas of ministry that God has entrusted us with. But a large portion of that is, is calling people alongside of us and saying, hey, you have a gift. Let's put, let's put that into action. Um, you know, how many... We, I don't know how many people exactly, but like we simply couldn't do Sunday morning alone as just staff. Oh, like, dude, it's no way. It's There's possible. absolutely no way. It wouldn't happen. Um, and, and I think all of our ministries for the least time. You know, we've got a good group of volunteers there. The youth group's got a good group. Um, we just couldn't do what we do without everyone and the whole body being there. And so we said we got about 50% roughly of our folks that are involved in ministry in some way. That's amazing. What would our church look like if we had 100%? It'd be insane. I didn't even know what would happen there. <laughs> yeah, I think it would it would be off the charts. Like, and so anyway, that's our goal: is that everyone would find their place, identify their purpose in Christ, and just be able to go out and bless the world um, as we go. Yeah, and feel free to strike up a conversation with us because we want to help you discover that. We want to we want to discover what what God has for you here. So I believe, I believe everybody's got a place here. We just got to find it. So to tie that in wrap all this up God's kingdom doesn't have a bench we've all got an identity in Christ and we've all got a spot on the court not a single one of us is going to be sitting on the bench it's an awesome feeling it is I mean the opportunity the call the gifting it's all there it's it's really just a matter of us saying okay Lord what do you want and yes <laughs> and yes right I'm Submitting. willing I'm willing to you to be used by you Lord we love you, church family. Uh, we get to have such a great opportunity every week to connect with you, to encourage you, and we love what we do. And uh, we start speaking for myself. I love what I yeah, do. Yeah, I love what I do. <laughs> You're speaking for me. I got it. And uh, such a privilege to be a part of your lives. And, and our goal is to equip us to become a church that's fully on fire for Christ and healthy and moving forward. And we believe God's going to do it because we have courage for the breakthrough. Amen. You guys have a wonderful week.